What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to interface the MPU 6050 six degree of freedom accelerometer with the Raspberry Pi Pico W using C++. Now this is an extension of a previous video where I first showed you how to get started with C++ on the Raspberry Pi Pico W to download the SDK, get your environment set up and run your first C++ script. Today, as I mentioned, we'll be doing an extension of that. So if you watch that video, which I'll link right here, this should be super easy for you. I'll be just be showing you the physical connection and the new code we'll be using to actually get values for acceleration and gyroscope and play around with the ranges and the other parameters we have available to us with this MPU 6050, which is frankly a great beginner device for any, for any DIY enthusiast, whether it's Raspberry Pi or uh, Arduino, I suggest anyone who is a beginner in the space really acquire one of these and get playing around with it because it's one of the most popular and beginner friendly accelerometers on the market. So enough being said guys, I do not want to waste any of your time. Go watch that video if you haven't and let's jump into it real quick and show you how this is done. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is just connect the MPU 6050 with four jumper wires exactly as you see here to the Raspberry Pi Pico W. So we can use a breadboard, you don't necessarily have to. However, I do recommend you have a breadboard just for organization and other project purposes. It's just better to have one and it makes your life a little easier when you are working with DIY projects in this space. So connect it as follows. Be sure to not mess up the VCC or the ground or you'll notice your accelerometer will start to fry. So for you beginners, please do not mess that up because that can actually ruin the device. Other than that, we have the SCL and SDA connections as you could see right there. This is just for I2C communication, which is probably the most popular communication protocol for these kinds of sensors to actually understand the values from the accelerometer and interpret them and display them on the screen. So at a high level, that's what's allowing us to do that. It's called I2C communication. So if you are a beginner and this is your first accelerometer or device, just know you're going to hear the words I2C a lot because it's pretty much used for every sensor in this space for Raspberry Pi and Arduino. So once we have this, let's jump to our code. So we're going to code a, a quick C++ program and I'll show you how to get that set up with the CMake file and upload it to the device. Okay, so now that we have our setup, we just want to create a project on our computer. Now, if you watch the previous video, we're just doing everything through the terminal once again. And I just went and created a folder. And in this folder, I'll just walk you through the files you have to generate and what's in them. So as in the first video, we have a cmakelist.txt file for instructions for our build. So in this file, what we have is just some instructions very similar to the first video. Once again, the project, the path to the SDK, the CMake version, the name of the executable, so main.cpp. But one of the things we're also adding is we're adding this hardware I squared C library because we want to communicate with the device via I squared C. Other than that, everything is just about the same, just a really primitive CMake list.txt file, just enough to run our main.cpp file and build everything we need with it with the corresponding libraries. So I'm just gonna go ahead and exit this. This will be in the description down below if you don't feel like copying along. And once we have our CMake list.txt file, we need of course our main.cpp file. So in this main.cpp file, a little more involved than the first video, which was frankly just a hello world example. What we have here is we define our imports and we're defining a bunch of things in regards to our register. So register, registers on the device allow us to communicate with it via the I2C protocol. We're not gonna get too much into that because really that needs a whole series to talk about I2C and how it works on the register level. So just know we're doing that there. And if you want to do more about that, I leave it for your own purposes. But what else is important here is we can actually configure the, the ranges of our accelerometer and our gyro with this code I have set up here. So if you want to read acceleration up to 16 Gs, you can set the accelerometer scale factor to this value right here. And you could just go ahead and define it down here where we actually set the acceleration scale factor depending on our needs. So if you're having a very low G project, maybe if you're just measuring angles, you don't necessarily have to increase that because the more you increase the range of acceleration that MPU 6050 can read, the more power it's going to use and the less accurate it's going to be. So with this device, we can read up to 16 Gs, but it's not needed for everyone's use case. Today, we'll just read four Gs. So we just pass in this four G scale factor. And you can do a similar thing with the, 
with a gyro where you can read up to certain degrees per second. So you could read up to 2000 degrees per second, which is a lot for very advanced applications where perhaps you're, you're spinning a lot. So you want to measure that as, as close as you can as possible. So you can configure up to 2000 DPS. So you can do that as well. And also you can play around with this sample rate div. So that's for the, the sampling rate on the device. So I'll leave that up to you. I just left it at one and you can play around with that if you need different types of sampling rate. Other than that, we just have some functions here in C++ to pretty much set up our MPU 6050 and get it configured to start reading values at those ranges. And finally, we do some bit manipulation to actually read the raw values from the device because all these devices essentially output some raw value that based on their data sheet, we can convert to values of actual tangible acceleration that is meters per second squared and degrees per second squared. So we use the data sheet and I just refer you to their data sheet, which you can find online to actually make sense of all those calculations we are doing. And then we just, in this function right here with the main, we call some of those functions. And finally, we just print the the values down here based on the scale factors and that sort of thing. And we, we print them up to two decimal points and we just read them every half a second. You can also play around with this as well if you want to read values more frequently. So this is all of the main.cpp code. Really, it's just getting the raw values and just scaling them based on the factors you set. But of course, in C++, we have to do a lot more than we would do in MicroPython to get these values to show on the screen. So once we have this file, we can go ahead and save it. Then finally, we have to make a build directory. So I'm just going to go into this build and show you how it's done here. So we just go into this build once we have those files and we're just going to remove all the files from the build because every time you build, it's better to clear everything you have from it. So I already built this before. So we're just gonna do rm slash rf star and we're just gonna do y and you'll see there's nothing in this build. So we could just run the cmake dot dot as we did in the first video to build our project. And then finally, we will run make to generate the UF2 file, which we will upload to the device. So give that a moment there. And once it's done creating, we will get back to the video. Okay, so it looks like our make ran successfully. So we can go ahead and confirm that by typing ls, looking at this UF2 file. Okay, so it is there and now we just want to flash it over. So in order to flash it over, we just want to unplug our device and we want to hold the boot cell button and plug it in as we are holding the boot cell button to be able to flash the UF2. So it is in boot cell mode. And then we could just go ahead and copy the UF2 file into the volume. So the Raspberry Pi can actually interpret the program. So we just do volumes, it should be, it should be there. And so just copy. So now your Raspberry Pi Pico W or Pico should be running the program as we speak. So in order to view that, we just want to actually see where our serial output is located. So we could just do USB, I believe it's .tty, or it's, I always forget this path. There we go, TTY, let's do TTY dot star. Okay, so it, it's going to be a path that resembles this if you're on a Mac. If you are on a Windows, once again, it will be a COM port. So we could just take that path, type in screen, this path. And if we click enter right now, we should start seeing values on the screen. So awesome, looks like everything is working as expected. And to confirm it's working as expected, right now my device is relatively straight. So that means the AX or the AZ is pointed up against gravity. So it should be approximately 1G, which makes sense. Now, if I flip it over, we should see that we are on the AY, which is now in the same direction as gravity, so negative 1G. And then if we flip it over, it should be 1G actually. Cool. And the same thing with the X. And then we can move around quick and show you that it goes high or low, depending on how fast we move it. And of course, you can see the, the gyro changing as well as we spin this thing around. So it looks like everything is working. Hopefully yours is working as well, and you follow along everything with this video very seamlessly. And one last thing actually I want to show you is you can actually exit the screen pretty easily. And it's kind of not intuitive to beginners who are using this. Just type in control A 
then type K and then type Y to exit screen. So that is all, we did everything successfully. So if you did it, please give yourself a pat on the back because you've successfully connected to the MPU 6050 with the Raspberry Pi Pico W and C++, which is a lot more involved than doing it in MicroPython, as we all know. So if you enjoyed this video and I made your life a little easier, please leave a like or a subscription to this channel. It would help me out a lot. Let me know what you wanna see in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next tutorial.